Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the completely captivating Carton CST100 NQ. Now this is a 100 millimeter telescope, that is, it's a four inch aperture. It's a, on a CST mount, which is otherwise called a supernova mount from Carton. About 1985 is the vintage. The N in the name stands for Newtonian, and the Q, I'm sure, stands for cuteness, because look at this thing. Is this the cutest little forage telescope you've ever seen? My goodness, I love the color. I love the fact that it is completely overmounted. This CST mount, it, it, they put four inch F15 refractors on this thing with no problem. I think that's perfectly suitable. So I love this scope and there are a lot of really fun features in addition to the completely beautiful blue color. I love it. Take a look at the finder on this scope. First of all, it's a right angle, which is unusual. Not exactly my favorite idea, but uh, it's executed well. Uh, it's got a nice, easy mechanism for focusing the reticle right here. There's how you focus that. And you focus the whole telescope right there. Notice also that it's got this kind of three-way adjustment. Uh, there's two knobs here, one back here and one over here, and then that's a nice heavy spring in there. This works much better than a modern one. Here's the modern version of the same thing. And I think you're all familiar with these. These don't work as well. They're not, uh, I think maybe it's because the spring is not as tight. This is a really big, robust spring in here. So it works quite well. I like that a lot. The focuser for this scope has a pretty short throw. It's just about maybe an inch and a half, something like that. That's to prevent the tube, the draw tube, from interfering with the optics in the scope itself. In order to compensate for that, they've included a, an additional draw tube here, like so, which works very nicely. It's got a locking mechanism. The idea here is uh, the intention of being able to set this up for astrophotography. The clamps on this scope are extremely unusual. This is the right ascension with the declinations exactly the same. The way this works is, turn this, tighten it down, and I think you can probably see that coming together just a little bit. It's a very precise fit. All right, there's loose, there's tight. Now the thing won't turn. The interesting thing about this is, if you turn it this way, you go righty-tighty with this one, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't do it for you. You have to go lefty-tighty. So it's, if you're on this knob, it's lefty-tighty, and on this one, it's righty-tighty. And if you're east of the meridian or west of the meridian, it will change. So it'll be either lefty loose or righty t I get very, very confused with this thing. Actually, you kind of get used to it after a while. It's not so bad. It's not as confusing as you might think. The right ascension axis is hollow. So you can put a finder, or a polar axis finder in there. Here's the right ascension setting circle. There's how you adjust it. Let's loosen up the clamp and turn it. You see, there it goes. One of the key design features of this scope is that the mount is modular. Let me show you what that means. I'm going to take the thing apart here. Now that the rings are removed, we have this little plate here and you could mount things to this plate. They had a special accessory plate for this. So this plate comes off. I don't have an original accessory plate, but I made this one. So now we have the ring set up for the 4-inch scope, and we're going to have a guide scope on this device. This is, of course, a, a setup to adjust a guiding telescope. We'll mount this to this plate. So 
So now we have a nifty little carton guide scope here. So now we're all set to do some guided astrophotography here. How's that for a fancy looking outfit? We can also remove this plate and mount it straight to the RA axis. Now that the plate's off, we have to remove the declination axis. I'm going to attach a couple of ball heads and a couple of cameras. It'd be nice to have a clock drive. You could drive this by hand using a wristwatch. That would be accurate enough for wide field astrophotography. I want to show you something interesting about this mount. If you loosen this here, you then have right here adjustment screw. The farthest north I can go is about a little less than 50 degrees. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt and call it 50 degrees. The maximum or the minimum angle here is about 25 degrees. So you've got a range of about 25 to 50 degrees. And heaven help you if you don't live in that range. Of course, you can always take the take the bolt off. Do it that way. It won't give you the precision that you may want. Especially, you know, this has got a polar scope in it. You want to be able to align this very nicely. And this mechanism allows you to do that. It's a very large latitude range. We'll cover uh, maybe 90% or... 80% of the people in the world would be covered on those latitudes. I just wanted to show you that limitation. Now, there we have the right ascension. Here is the declination. Notice that those are just about identical. They are almost exactly the same part. There's only a few differences in the interior here, but all the gear work and most of the outer structure is all the same. The setting circles are different, of course. But that's uh, a nice economy of scale there. So for carton, you can make, essentially design one of these and make the whole mount, or more or less the whole mount. Here's the carton mount in comparison to two other mounts. This is the Vixen Polaris. Uh, they put pretty big telescopes. I think they put a four inch refractor on this, on this mount. Uh, the carton just overwhelms it. It's, I mean, it's just about, oh, it's at least twice as much in terms of weight. Um, and in terms of strength, probably a lot more than that. This is the Takahashi uh, type one mount. This is the one they used for their four inch F10 reflector. And they may have used some bigger scopes, put some bigger scopes on this too. It's prob probably very close to the same weight as this one. But you can see that this carton is just a beast. Look at that thing. This mount head is very proprietary. There's a very limited number of things you can put on there. Well, you know I'm not going to stand for that. I made some adapters. Okay, with this adapter on it, it's now all set up for anything. You can put a Vixen dovetail or a Lozmandy D-plate on here. This little Vixen dovetail has a universal telescope adapter kind of a thing. 
But this scope, you know, this scope could handle a much, much larger telescope. Big telescope. So I could put a deep plate on here with a great big four inch refractor or something easily. And now I have the CST mount set up on some longer legs. These are not original to this mount, but they are, uh, appear to be identical. They're from a Goto actually, but they appear to be identical to the ones that Carton sold with their mounts for a longer, a taller tripod. And I've got a Takahashi TS-80 semi-apple mounted on it. I think you'll agree it looks perfect. It fits nicely. I had to put a bigger counterweight on it. I think you'll agree it looks really good. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the charming Carton CST100NQ. Thank you for watching.